We're going to have a look at the disc sander over in the Tyler Metal Shop, how to use this guy safely and properly, and a few techniques too. Uh, first thing to think about are some of the safety concerns, and uh, always wear a face shield when working on one of these guys, so a uh, face shield is required. Um, some other thing you're going to uh, notice is that uh, on this little safety notice here is face shield and safety glasses in addition to safety glasses. You're also going to um, refrain from wearing any gloves. Uh, you'll want to wear uh, some long pants and some closed-toed shoes, preferably steel toe uh, in the metal shop here. Um, so we've got some uh, protection for your lower extremities. Uh, I like to wear these um, fire retardant uh, shirts too if I'm making a lot of sparks. Uh, hearing protection is a good idea too generates a lot of loud noises and you're going to want to keep the um, dust collection system on. The um, machine is piped in to a, uh, a hose here that will collect uh, a fair amount of this debris, but if you have any other kind of respiratory issues, you may want to also wear voluntarily a respirator dust mask um, or something along those lines. Some other safety concerns to think about with this guy uh, in terms of the size or type of material that you're going to be grinding on here. Um, nothing smaller than three inches, all right? We've got a three inch rule on here, um, similar to wood shop equipment, where uh, if it's smaller than three inches, which is about here, about the distance of a finger, you can easily get uh, drawn into the machine so we don't want to get our fingers too close. Uh, also, if your part is too large, right, then you can't really support it safely when working around the equipment. So um, you have two options, two options when your material is too uh, small or too large, and the first of which is have your uh, material clamped down securely to a table surface. Uh, so this part here is about three by three or a little smaller. And uh, once it's clamped down, you've, uh, you can use either a uh, handheld angle grinder with a sanding disc, grinding disc, whatever you're going to be doing. Uh, and if it's a smaller part, you might just need to do some detail work with a file. So that's another good option uh, to, to explore. Um, so your other option for using those tools, if your part doesn't clamp down to the table easily enough, then just uh, clamp it down onto uh, one of these table vices and you can still use the same equipment um, to work away at it, uh, either a file uh, or, um, or an angle grinder and you can see how we can kind of work securely and safely to deburr these small parts that way. So always have your part um, when it's too small or too large securely uh, fastened and then bring the tool to the work rather than the other way around. So this is just for a good size range of, of items. Um, so when we're actually working on this thing, let's take note of the way this disc spins, all right? So similar to the woodworking uh, equipment, you're going to have this guy spin in this direction. We notice by um, the rotation arrow over here will tell us that. And that means that when we're um, sanding or grinding our parts, uh, we'll want to have it flat on this table and um, moving along on this downward side of the spin. If we're working on the other end here, it's going to shoot sparks up uh, in our faces and, and that's not going to be good or launch them across the room. So always have your part uh, flat on that table and, uh, and work on the downside of that spin. Uh, I've got right here a piece of material that is uh, typical for what people might be uh, grinding around on here. If they uh, go plasma cut something, uh, they'll have this kind of gnarly edge and they might want to clean it up. So this is a good tool for that. Uh, always make sure that your part's moving around when you're grinding too. Uh, another thing that people might be doing is tuning up some cuts from the uh, chop saw. So here you got this big nasty gnarly burr on here and so we would want to um, basically bring this up and uh, grind away uh, that burr or true up the, the cut. Uh, if you want to chamfer the edges of something, uh, that you hold it again securely on the table surface here. Um, notice how I'm flat on the surface and if I want to put a, a little bevel on there for a weld or something or just take that sharp edge off, uh, I just rotate this part around like so. Obviously we would get rid of that burr first and then uh, you can get a really nice chamfer on things. And then always keep your part moving along the disc um, to keep things uh, safely um, 
you know, moving along and also not to wear out the abrasive too fast. If you just stay in one spot, uh, you're going to tear through that paper. It's just a thin piece of cloth back paper stuck to that steel uh, disc or aluminum disc and it's going to uh, wear out really quickly. So always keep your parts moving. Here's a piece of round bar and sometimes you'll get a wonky cut here depending on what you've been doing. Really great way to true up uh, any square or round thing is to just kind of rotate it um, on the disc and then you'll be pretty much guaranteed to get a, a pretty darn close to 90, at least rough enough for this shop. Uh, always check if you do need a 90 or a 45 or something, you can bring your choice of square and so you can see we're a little out of square at the moment and we can adjust that uh, using these two knobs, one on either side and uh, adjust the, the angle of the table till we get it to where we need it. Uh, you can also use a combo square if needed. Another really great tool is uh, floating around for guiding purposes is one of these miter gauges and it will slide into the slot of the table here. Um, and so uh, this is a really great uh, item and you can just loosen this knob and set it to whatever angle you might need. Uh, and so whenever you're cutting something on either the band saw or the chop saw or by hand and you need to tune up an angle, um, so here's a 45, you know, you can set this guy to a 45 using one of those squares and uh, feed it along here. You could also have this, uh, it's probably actually a better idea to have that like so. Um, and then you can uh, feed along like so. Uh, remember to just keep it on the uh, downside of the spin here. And this can rotate in either orientation, so you can be feeding in from this angle too. So really handy tool. You can also set this guy to 90 using a square and, um, and ensure that you're getting a good uh, square cut on your parts. So really good for truing up uh, angles. Really good for taking that um, you know, bit of slag off of the end of um, you know, your sheet metal parts. And uh, just realize that it is a flat disc, so you can't really get to inside um, curves and things like that. You can really just do outside ones, right? Um, and then, so you can work for the most part out here. It'll get a little tricky in there, but you know, by flipping parts over and stuff, you'll be okay. One thing to be really aware of is uh, never with this sheet metal part or any other sort of uh, smaller parts especially, uh, never tilt your piece up. That is really, really dangerous. So never tilt your part on the, um, on the bed there because if it does, it's gonna bring your fingers up into it. Uh, and, and once you get a finger caught in there, that's really, really dangerous. So always make sure that your parts are always on the flat on the surface of the table here and never floating up or tilting them up to remove a burr. You can, once you get it you know, pretty trued up flat like that and there's a little hairline edge, a file uh, or a little hand work will, uh, will clean that up really quickly rather than try and risk uh, floating that part around. So this is your control surface. This is where it's safe. Uh, and make sure that you stay on that control surface and don't float above here. There are certain applications where you might find yourself sort of floating above, so, um, and parts getting smaller, so, um, like when you're grinding these tungstens, and we have another video on that. Uh, so these are tungstens for the TIG, and you know we do supply a small uh, holder here for all small items because you need to get a particular grind on here. You can float up here, but notice how you know we've got this uh, item here to hold it securely. Uh, other options uh, for larger bar stock um, might be to chuck up your part into a drill and then you know safely or securely uh, hold it like so. Um, but always be, uh, you know, standing uh, not in the direction of spin. So if you were standing, you know, on this side uh, doing this um, and something gave way, it's going to come right at you. So always make sure you're standing away if you're, uh, you know, putting the edge on, uh, you know, sharpening um, some sort of round bar. So those are the basic tenets of uh, using this guy. So maybe I'll, I'll fire it up here. Um, and show you just a quick grind before we call it quits. So maybe I'll, I'll do one of our common tasks here of deburring this piece. Um, so we'll get the dust collection system on in the back. And tune this guy up. Clear that table off. And rotate that part around. If I need to get that burr off, Now I've got a pretty nice part. If I want to 
bevel the edges, you know, and then that's a good bevel. So the other thing you might find yourself doing is taking the burr off of these, and then you always want to keep it clean. Rotate like so to round the corner out. So that's a good uh, option. Uh, and then perhaps a piece of round bar, right? That's how we do that. And then if you were going to use this guy, sort of float. Uh, Right, keeping it moving. Okay, so I think you get the idea. Um, if your parts ever get too warm, because we do have that no glove rule, uh, so as if your part does get too warm, we do have uh, these little quench buckets attached to these other grinders. You just pop them out and fill them with water and you can uh, cool things off like so. Uh, just be sure that um, you dry off the table surface here uh, from any residual moisture after that disc has stopped spinning uh, and then that way you don't have that top get too rusty uh, or just uh, ask Tim or our shop tech and, and we'll get it uh, cleaned up with a little bit of um, wax and steel wool. Alright, so that is the uh, disc sander over in the Tyler Metal Shop. Re remember no gloves and that 3 inch rule is really important. Always keep your parts on that table on the downside of the spin and you'll be safe. You don't want to go sanding off any fingers or knuckles. Uh, it gets really, really uncomfortable uh, quickly. So work safely and if you have any questions, uh, always ask our shop technician or your instructor. Um, and if any equipment is damaged, make sure that you report that immediately um, and we'll get it figured out.